in Quentin Tarantino's Not Having It. And I love this. This is awesome. So Quentin Tarantino's out there promoting his brand new movie uh, based on the Manson murders. Um, it's been getting, you know, some rave reviews from pundits all over the place. Quentin Tarantino obviously gets rave reviews anyway. So maybe, you know, I'm not sure how much weight you should put on that. But so far, so good. The trailers look amazing. Starring Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, Margot, Margot Robbie, and a few other people. So it's going to start studying cast. It looks amazing so far how it's shot. Um, and this kind of, you know, and this... Um, New York Times reporter decided during their press junk is the thing they do where they kind of just sit on stage and take questions for the press about the movie and how it's made and that sort of malarkey, right? It looks, it to me, it looks like the most boringest job in the world. It's probably one, it's probably a part of the whole movie making process that a lot of these actors and actresses probably hate, you know? You, you spend hours sitting on the set not doing much, right? You repeat the same lines a hundred times and then you have to sit there on the stage uh, answering the most benign questions from journalists all over the world, some of which you can't understand, some of which they're asking the same questions seven times, phrasing it differently. It just really really or really really not probably the best not not the best place to kind of get salient incisive or insightful answers from anyone right because you know they're tired they're run down they're hungry you know it's not, not the best place so of course in that kind of environment a really woke and really um socially conscious um uh agenda driven uh ideology ridden journalists decided to go up there on one well, side to grab the mic and ask Quentin tarantino who's known to be a bit snarky who's known to be a bit caught curt a bit uh quick uh and a bit you know what you call it um just put off by journalists in general decides to ask him a really loaded question around about margot Robbie, right because i think she plays she plays sharon in madison murders right and something along the lines of like she doesn't have that many lines right and it's you know she tries to insinuate that you know it's because she's a woman or some sort of shit right so let's let's kind of i'll show you the clip and then you can kind of go from there right so it's the clip from um, Variety on their Twitter page. And I think the actual headline on it, I think it says it here on the tweet too, Quinta Tarantino snapped a female reporter for the New York Times who asked why Margot Robbie wasn't given more to say or to do in his latest film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now, let's not say snapped. What do you think snapped means? Snapped to me means, you know, what, what do you say? What? How dare you ask me that? How dare you? Who do you think you... Like, that's, that's to me is snapping, right? Raising your voice, uh, becoming uh, visibly aggressive, right? Um, shaking your head furiously, like, that's snap to me, right? But let's see what they think what snapped is. Um, Quentin, you would put Margot Robbie, a very talented actress, uh, actor. In you can see where it's going already, the insinuation, right? actress actor right just stating the thing right like there's a there's a movement in woke twitter or work social or uh, sjw world where again so the weird it's just so strange battle to be fighting i've always wondered some of the battles they fight are really strange because they fight so many at the same time it kind of takes away from the overall message because i think being a social justice warrior isn't a bad thing right i think standing up for social injustices is quite an admirable thing to do right it might be a bit delusional it might be a little bit it might be a little bit dis it might be um one of those things where you're doing only to kind of prop up your social uh you know rankings in front of people right you want to be, you want to steam a lot better than what you are it might come it might be like that but there might be some good attentions to it too right you might generally be worried and a bit you know and concerned about the things that happen to your own society and you want and no one's paying attention to it uh, politicians are focusing on big policy things and not focusing on the little man local politicians are also you know trying to stay in office and not really trying to you know uh, pull up any trees so there might be some avenue or some space for you to come in and step in and try and do some right some good but i just think fighting these weirdly weird battles like you know how you uh address a female actress right whether it's an actress or actor right whether they should be a best female lead or just best actors in general right it's just a very bizarre thing to be fighting i'm not too sure if that's the best way you want to do things but again what do i know <laughs> Look how annoyed he looks already. But this is snap to them. And I wondered, I guess that was a deliberate choice on your part. Why she doesn't have that many lines? Why that was, that we don't hear her actually speaking very much. And uh, Margo, I wondered if you also talked about taking the film to this point. <laughs> well, I just reject your hypothesis. <laughs> <laughs> and that was basically it. Huh? She asked, the reporter asked Quentin Tarantino, why doesn't Margot Robbie have more lines? Kind of insinuating that, you know, women should, you know, he's not giving women more lines in these movies. I'm sure there's going to be some journalist out there that's going to compile every minute. It's going to compile a spreadsheet of the amount of minutes women speak during Quentin Tarantino films and kind of insinuate that he's a misogynist. 
very, very bizarre thing to do, right? Because, you know, if you're a misogynist, you wouldn't have Margot Ruby sitting next to you on a panel, right? It doesn't make any sort of sense. And again, it's his artistic expression, right? Should that, should your artistic expression be ideologically based? That's probably the question here, right? That she's probably posing. And I don't know. I'm not too sure. I know for, I know recently the Captain Marvel, is it Captain Marvel, right? The movie with, um, what's her face? With Brie Larson has been getting absolutely panned on social and in general, it's got not really got good reviews. You know, Brie Larson comes across, you know, a little bit of her as a raging feminist, which isn't a bad thing. It's probably a feminist movie, which I think the director admitted it to. But I think maybe doing, I think maybe it does the movie a disservice for it to be so ideologically laden, right? And maybe there should be some elements into it that you can recognize, okay, cool, this is a female, this is a feminist heroine, heroine, right? Heroine, you call them that? Feminist, whatever, yeah, um, whatever. Um, heroin or something along the lines or hero or whatever it's called right heroin is it heroin female le- hero i'm pretty sure right heroin anyway you could probably write a script without it being so overtly you know um woke i think it's probably a way to do it and again that's the element that's the problem of you know lacing your movie with ideology even propaganda in movies is what well, doesn't work because it takes away from it being an actual good movie you have to do away with those kind of things and again it's a movie right you should be sent you should suspend your you should suspend your disbelief it's like I remember, I think there was a Bill Burr bit or something in online just saying along the lines of like, uh, he like, made a joke about that's why he can't watch action movies with a female lead because it's always some like really stick thin woman um, somehow being able to you know, fight, fight off like, you know, six, six foot three, 200 pound dudes. It's just not not realistic, right? And it's funny, it's a funny joke, but you know, it's he's being a little bit silly because it's a movie, right? You should be able to suspend your disbelief, right? It's a movie, like no one believes there's a dude out there that can fly who doesn't get hit by bullets, right? It doesn't be effective when he hits by bullets. But it's the thing we just spend our disbelief for like an hour or so in the movie. So I think there is that part of it. So if you can suspend your disbelief that there's a, a guy out there called Superman who can fly through the sky at the speed of light, then you should also spend your disbelief that maybe a movie isn't, again, a representation of, you know, society as we know it. It might be an interpretation of society. It might be a commentary on what's going on. It might be exaggerated. Whatever it is, it's his artistic expression and he, and it, he shouldn't have to justify why he did things or he shouldn't have to have he shouldn't have to take on your ideology in order to make you happy about the movie right he should be able to do what he wants to do because again that's the mark of being an actual true creative right um and again he hasn't worked as hard as he has over his career to earn that level of freedom to kind of then have a, a, a journalist who hasn't done you know jack shit and just been you know, poking the bear and asking these you know inane questions and again i think there is maybe something to be said about movies reflecting society in some way shape or form or informing societal trends or i don't know there is maybe some conversation in there but again it's a movie based loosely upon a historical event that happened if we and, and again there are some un, there are some maybe some uncomfortable truths in that charles manson story right there might be an aspect of the charles manson story where he was um purposely targeting women who are a bit you know a bit dim right so you can manipulate them so maybe Chris Tarantino, again, I haven't watched the movie. I've only read half of the book, uh, Murder Machine. I don't know what's going to move, but I'd imagine if Quentin Tarantino wanted to just evoke the spirit of this woman without her saying too much because she didn't say too much during the time that it happened. She was a bit of a ditz and kind of went along with it because she got enamored by this guy. Then that's the, that's the story. There's no point of making her a heroine. There's no point of making her kick it to the man or you go girl if that isn't the story. If she was to take an advantage of, if the men in her life um you know mentally and physically abused her then that's the story and as uncomfortable as it is that is what the story should be and the moment you try and subvert that and change something else the moment it gets a bit weird right i'd say in general it's just not needed um i don't know again I, it's just a weird I, I i i'd really it's just again we all have different ways of viewing the world but it must be really it must be really tiring to view the world as these ideological battles all the time right to everything is an ideological battle men against men against women patriarchy blah 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 blah. it must be um you know institutional racism it must be so tiring for you to see everything like as a matter of power and dominance and race and it's just weird the world the world doesn't run like that the world really mostly runs via competence and maybe wealth right mostly right wealth and competence as we've seen with the university scandal right well competence and wealth kind of insulates you from a lot those actresses that try to get their kids into um the, that university by you know by fobbing their details and whatever they're probably going to get off they're probably not going to get any time in jail they're probably going to get four months if, if you're a regular person right <laughs> you would you would you would get chucked into you would get thrown under the prison let alone in the prison so that's probably more important than 
you know, whether or not you use the right pronoun, whether or not you've got enough female leads. It's about having some kind of level of influence and power. And, it, and that doesn't come from protesting. It comes from doing good work. It comes from allying yourself with people. It comes from maybe allying yourself with people that you don't really like or you don't really agree with their politics. But, you know, these these kind of like, you know, woke heads, they just want to create a utopia that doesn't really exist. It's this idea that you can kind of mold the world to your liking as opposed to, you know, uh, operating in the world as is and trying to make an impression that way, right? Because there is aspect, there's that famous uh, Steve Jobs quote, right? About leaving a dent in the universe, right? Just poking, like changing little things there to change the course of the of, of the of world's history, right? Yeah, of the history of innovation. But it's not about coming in and doing things the way I want to do it under no circumstances am I going to change. So you have to kind of make a compromise. You have to kind of you know move a little bit around here and there. But I don't know. Maybe 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 that's the whole point of their fight. They don't want to compromise. They feel as if you know the patriarchy has done a lot done that damage as it is, and they want to stand head fast and kind of make their own ground there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but whatever. I love Queen Tara's approach. I think that was a really good way to answer a question that's pretty ridiculous and kind of, you know, shoot it down and kind of keep it moving. 